Welcome to It's a Woman's World, a show which discusses any and all topics under the sun from a woman's point of view. Our program believes that women should be treated with respect at all times and in all places. Here's today's moderator, Ali Nathani. Welcome to the show. We're going to ask you to come with us today as we're going to tackle what we think is a tough subject here in the United States today, and that's about race. We're going to specifically focus on women and race, and I have a great panel with me to start that discussion. So I'm going to introduce them right now. First of all, I have Ty Goodwin with me. Hello, Ty. Hi, Allie. How are you? Oh, great to see you. Thank you. And Nadia Giordano. Welcome, Nadia. Oh, thank you. I'm excited about the topic today. M me too. And Dr. Susan Strauss, hello. Hi, I'm excited about it as well. All right, well, a topic that uh, we have a lot going on in, on in this country right now, right? And mm -hmm. so we know, and we want to share this with our viewers, that some of this might be a little uncomfortable at times. Yes. But we all have agreed and said, mm -hmm. we're going to go there yeah. and uh, hopefully try to walk away and, and from this conversation with some perspective and uh, with a little bit of uh, critical thinking and, and conversation. So, all right, so let's get started. So the first one I'm thinking about is the hair question, right? <laughs> so what do we mean by the hair question? Ty, you want to tell us about that? I will. Uh, you right. know, um, you often would get someone that says, oh, I just love your hair. And it can seem like such an innocent, innocuous comment to make. But when it starts to, I love your hair and let me touch it, mm -hmm. right? It begins to get a little uncomfortable. And I know as a black woman, I've had that experience of, oh, let me touch your hair. And it gives you a very different feeling than I think a lot of people expect. So I know Susan and Nadia, you may have asked that question of someone. When you, oh. when you did that, what, what, what was your intention? Like, what were you doing to, when you asked that question? Well, I, I haven't asked if I could touch it for a long time because I've learned, but I would ask to touch it because I knew that it wouldn't feel like mine. And I was curious as to was it um, thick, was it thinner, was it um, more springy? I was cur It was curiosity. And I... I would ask. I haven't for years, but I remember asking one African American woman that I was on a board with if I, I told her, I said, I really like your hair. I don't remember if I asked if I could touch it. And she knew me and she said, thank you. But she said, would you go up to a white woman and say, I really like your hair? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, yeah, I, I do that to people a lot, even mm -hmm. people I don't really know. Um, and I have asked white women if I could touch their hair if they're wearing it the way I'd like to wear it and they say well I use product on it and I say oh do you care if I touch it I wanted to see what the product felt like uh -huh. but this has made me second guess doing it to anybody um, and not realizing that it, and what is it is it let me ask you this then because I know Ali we talked about this at lunch before today too and you've had people want to touch your hair mm -hmm. and I can see that it would be intrusive. So I would like to know from your perspective, what, what do you, what is it exactly that you don't like? Because it's a, a it's private, is it because well, who in the hell are you to be touching me anywhere? There or? you go. Is that <laughs> there it? There you go. It's too personal. It's too personal. Well, I've, I will compliment hair, but I've never asked someone if I could touch it. Of course, I'm an introvert. You're an extrovert. I'm an extrovert, yeah. And there might, that might be that difference, but to me it's just like, no, don't ask someone if you can touch their hair. Yeah. Don't well, touch I'm, their clothes either. I think for me With sometimes, that, yeah. you know, as, as my, I'm a person of color, my family's from India, so being part of that experience, and particularly living here in Minnesota, it makes, it sort of makes me feel othered. It makes me feel like I'm, I'm a, some, something, and oftentimes I'll get, oh, so this hair, oh, it's so exotic. Mm -hmm. Can I touch it? Can I feel it? And I know people are, most of them are coming with very good intentions. They just want to know I think about mostly, me. mostly, yes. Right? yes. I do really feel that, but what it comes down to sometimes is, 
I just don't want your grimy hands in my hair. Yes. Yeah, in my hair. That I just makes washed sense. it. Don't mm -hmm. touch it. Leave it yeah. alone. And then also, I don't want to be picked out. This is just me. This is mm -hmm. me. Yeah. I stand out enough mm -hmm. here in Minnesota. I don't need other things to call it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and yeah. I mentioned during lunch to my daughter, who's an adult now, but as a little girl, had super curly hair. Right. Very, very curly hair. And very, very thick hair. And people always, and she was a little girl, so they didn't think to ask. Mm -hmm. always wanted to touch her hair mm -hmm. and to this day she's got issues with her hair she's white mm -hmm. but even she says just get away leave my hair alone mm -hmm. so for you it feels like they're making you other mm -hmm. is that you too Ty um, other or you know I think there's some context to it you know for a lot of black women you know it's you know it's it's the exotic thing, right? But it's also making you feel like almost like an animal. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, oh, that's so different. I'm just gonna touch it and pet. Like, no, I'm a person. Oh, like petting and a dog. And it's also the privilege thing. The Whereas privilege or the entitlement that you entitlement. can just come into my space and you can oh, touch my hair. And if you feel like you're a little above another person, then you actually feel like you might have the right Oh, not yet. To make okay. that move. A yeah, good observation. Because a girl, adults do it to children. Yes. Same oh, kind see, of thing. Yeah, see, I don't, I, I, I would even, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to a kid. And I think it's part I of do that, to kids. that background, like <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't do it. But, yeah. you know, we also talked about this earlier that I think historically there's some things with mm -hmm. women, especially black women in hair. You know, there was a time in our country where we were made to wear scarves and cover up our hair mm -hmm. because people found it unseemly or, you know, they just didn't want it to be shown. So there's all this context in black hair um, that black women deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that I think it's overlooked when it's just like, well, I just want to touch it. I just, I'm just curious. I respect your curiosity. Yeah. That doesn't mean mm -hmm. that I have to acquiesce to you being right, curious. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So how often does that happen to the two of you? It's happened a lot. Like, you know, and I've got it on the other end too with not being curious. I remember I used to wear extensions or braids and I remember one woman, I heard her say to her husband, oh my gosh, it looks like Medusa. <gasps> yeah, and, and it was just, yeah, she was just, you know, so kind of proud of herself that she made that. And, and I'm just, I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right. Mm -hmm. um, but it's that insensitivity to, you don't understand that this is a style, that this is, it just doesn't look like yours and you've never seen anything like it, but it's not. Medusa, mm -hmm. you know, so I've had it on right. both ends. Yeah. Right, right, and I, you know, as we talk about hair, I think another topic that I think a lot about is how we dress. And yes. so mm -hmm. I think often in the circles that I'm with, um, in the women of color in my workplace or that I've experienced, we, we purposely come to work, let's say, or even frankly, if I'm going to a shop to shop, um, I'm gonna make sure that I'm, I'm put together. I'm not yeah. going to look the, like I just rolled out of bed and I think sometimes that's really misunderstood by the white community um, in particular because I, I see a lot of my white friends and colleagues who don't even have to think twice about that yeah. and there was once a, a video I watched about a black man who walked into a shop with, uh, with a suit on and how he was treated and then he went back three days later to pick something up, had a hoodie sweatshirt on, jeans, oh. same mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. but was treated so completely different. Yeah. So, Ty, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something you have experienced. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I remember being here in Minnesota and going to an Ulta beauty supply store, mm -hmm. um, and I was getting it was I was getting ready for um, my wedding, and I was looking for some things to take, and I was literally followed around the store. Mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't have on anything fancy. You know, I was doing wedding event stuff. You know, who dresses up when you're doing that? Yeah. Um, but outside of those experiences, I'm always thinking about how do I look, mm -hmm. right? When I go somewhere, am I looking in a way that's gonna make them think that I'm suspect, like I'm gonna take something, oh. like I'm a criminal or like I don't belong? And it's not just in stores, but you know, we talked about this at work as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't afford to show up at work and not have my hair done mm -hmm. or, you know, not have, you know, um, brushed my hair in a certain way, or even we talked about the curly hair thing. Mm -hmm. Like with black women that have a lot of natural, mm -hmm. you know, curly hair, um, you're perceived in a workplace differently than somebody who has straight hair. 
you're not as authoritative. Mm -hmm. um, and they even did a show about that on the Today Show mm -hmm. where they were talking about um, the perception of you when you have curly hair versus straight hair in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And that goes, we were talking beforehand also, that goes across cultures it too does. because we see that a great deal of our, our news anchors are long, straight, blonde hair. We're talking about women primarily, <laughs> uh, but there's probably some in men too. And the straight hair is definitely in preponderance and far more popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I grew up with that. I remember, you know, I grew up in Philadelphia, and I remember there was a newscaster, I had to be about six or seven years old, who wore her natural hair on TV and was fired. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's funny now because my daughter is 17, and when I get so excited now when I see women with natural hair, I'm like, look at that, look at that. She's like, Mom, chill out. Like, what are you, you know, why are you so, oh, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Even at 17, the world is such a different place. Yeah. When I grew up, you couldn't do that. You couldn't be that on TV and be accepted. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, we've got a whole host of women and natural hair is everywhere mm -hmm. and it feels really exciting to see that but I know we've come a long way with it. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think when we think about women of color, black women and white women, what do you think, Maybe and maybe I should direct this more to Nadia, what do you think are questions that we would have of, of women of color that we would be afraid to ask for fear we would sound racist. I guess, let's just go right off the top of my head, my biggest fear is, is, is big enough that it's like, tell me what not to say because I know it might come out of my mouth and, and I don't want to sound like that. I don't want, but there's bound to be something in here. You know, we know it's in here. We've been, I've been, I was brought up in a community where there wasn't a white person, a black person for 150 miles. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up with no experience mm -hmm. until I came to the Twin Cities and, and had some some experiences with co-workers which was very very positive and and fun and exciting and but I have no idea what things I said and didn't say in those days because nobody responded back mm -hmm. it, it just rolled with it yeah. so my question is tell me one or two things I should never ever say <laughs> or do and I, 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 I don't do the touching thing that, 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 I, that I understand um, well can I be really really honest yeah. is that I think a lot of black women have some of those same questions you oh, know there are certain things that I could say or things that I would ask Ask, mm -hmm. is that going to be perceived as racist if I say this or if I, you know, call you out for something that I think, well, why would you do that or why would you say that? And am I now an angry black woman? So should oh, I not say okay. that? okay, that's... Right, so that, I think there's, there's yeah. room for both for that on both sides yeah. of the table. Yeah, so what, could, but on the angry black woman, that's what I would be afraid of. That's mm. what I've been taught since then. Interesting, And so yeah. it's like... Well, we've got our unconscious biases that we're not even aware of that yeah. can creep out. Yeah. I would like to know, what would you want to ask a white woman that you might be afraid hmm. would sound racist? Interesting. Um, so one of the things that I've always wanted to have some conversations about is, you know, why do black, why do white women not read more or watch more black shows? And so I'll give you an example. We were talking about this about chick flicks. Yes. For years, the only chick flicks have been about white women. Yes. Right? We can yes. picture a number of them. Mm -hmm. um, where are the shows for black women that are mainstream? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, that would go to outside of Medea, because everybody loves Tyler Perry. I don't really like a lot of Tyler Perry movies, but a lot of people will go see, you know, Tyler Perry movies. But where are the romantic movies with a black woman lead that white women will go to? And I wonder, do you ever think about that? Like when you go into a bookstore, you don't have to go to a black section. All the books are presumed gonna be about white people. Mm -hmm. You're right. right? Mm -hmm. So do you ever think, I wonder, do you ever think about that when you go into places? If you ever go into a bookstore mm -hmm. and you take a look at the mural they have around the cafes, I have not found one black person in that mural of writers. Mm -hmm. Mm, I just haven't even noticed the mural. And they're so. writers from all different, um, you know, years. Okay. There's not one black person there. And I'm so sensitive to that, but I wonder when other white women go into places like that, does it ever cross your mind that where are the black movies? Where are the black stories? 
And there are, and I think this might be a typical answer too, there are more now than ever before, mm -hmm. but if you still have to look for them, there's not enough. Well, here's my question with that, would you go see it? My mother is hooked on Empire. She's she's <laughs> she's got it. she's got me started on Empire. Empire but yeah. it, would I have when I was scrolling and flipping through, uh -huh. something else could have easily caught my eye first because I wouldn't have instantly related to it. It so surprised me mm. when my mom said Empire, Empire put Empire in the queue. And I thought, I can learn a few things from my mother. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great example with your mom, but I still think it's back to me, to the to what people find of value. And mm -hmm. I, what I mean by that is, let's think about, just as you said, some of the popular TV shows right now. I mean, I think I think society is trying, but like if you think about also the, the award shows, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how much have we heard just, mm -hmm. just in the last two, three yeah. years about Who's winning all these awards? And where are people putting the money? And one of the most popular, well, I don't know if it's so popular, it's not a show I really like, care for, but think of this show called The Bachelor. If you've heard of this no. show. Oh, I don't watch I it. Okay. I don't watch so it. Okay, so it's not, a, I don't think it's a great show, but it's, mm -hmm. it's always about white people, mm -hmm. and they've tried to do so, uh, a show with black people, but you don't see that. You don't see, it's mm -hmm. predominantly, it's the white audience that is still getting most of the attention. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, I have to say also to, a, just I have to say to our Native American community as well, mm -hmm. who are so invisible, the yes. invisibility concept that mm -hmm. comes up yes. um, within this, this discussion about yeah. what we value and where we are willing at the end of the day to put our money. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there's um. You were asking about what are some questions I would want to ask white women, but I'll sh I'll share with you. I'm in a book club, a virtual book club, mm -hmm. um, and we were um, choosing a book, and I chose a book by Dr. Joy Lewis, um, Minnesota. Um, black woman, the book is um, a really great read. It's called um, Healing: The Radical Art of Self Care. But I was the only black woman in a book club, mm -hmm. and I found myself really hesitant to promote the book or to offer the book because in my mind I was thinking are they really going to want to read it right mm -hmm. but if it was a book by a, a white author I wouldn't have had that same trepidation no you wouldn't thought, have hesitated have said. Mm -hmm. and so what my question for myself was am I going to be true to myself this is the book I really really want to read and it's my turn to pick but mm -hmm. I know I'm not sure if my audience is going to be in agreement with that mm -hmm. so those are some of the kind of the things that am I going to be seen as oh she's trying to push this black agenda on us because it's a book by a, a black woman and I'm not black. But those are some of the things that I think about mm -hmm. in those environments where I am not where it's not just black women, you know? So that's one of the questions. Yeah. And then there's probably that feeling, will I be judged because of that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to move us on to another topic. Yes. Okay. This is one that I think about a lot. Mm -hmm. This is the one where in the last three, four, five, six, seven, eight years we've seen a lot of change with People of color who have um, who have children, and particularly, let's say, teenage boys or b mm -hmm. boys, right? And so, a lot of us have to think about whether your parent or whoever you are in in, in, in a young person's life of them driving, mm -hmm. this issue of driving, right? And so it is the issue of the police pulling them over, and I've sa I have a son, I have two sons, I've said to the one who drives, you just keep your hands on that wheel, and you be respectful, because at the end of the day, I don't want my child shot. That's a really big thing for me in my life. Um, I know also in, in the black community, that's a, that's absolutely yeah. a, a huge issue, right? But we don't even think twice about don't it. Think that? twice about it. This yeah. is my question. I often think about the white community. I think you get to choose. Like we can sit together. I can sit with my white friends and talk about this. I'll get a lot of oh, sympathy. Oh gosh, I wish I have to think about. And they're they're genuine, and, and that means something to me. So I don't want to discount that. But what I often think about is, wow, you are like so lucky about that topic. Like you get to step out of that. I gotta live it. And I think that 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 I gotta live it mm -hmm. comment, Ty. That's one where. Every day we got to live these things, right? Yeah. Whether it's it's the driving, it's the going into the store, it's about take me seriously, give me a chance. Mm -hmm. I got to live it. I don't get the chance to step in and out of that world. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So that's a question. Be it so uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but that one is one that really gets to me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can totally understand it. And for, for me, it's not even just about having a son. I have a daughter, mm -hmm. but it's even not even about just black males as a sure. black woman. Um, if I go out and I have um, a head wrap on, you know, am I going to be seen as somebody who's a threat or somebody who might cause a problem? Or um, one of the things I was thinking about when we were talking about that earlier is um, as a white parent, you know, if your child does something and gets pulled over by the police, I've seen a lot of white parents be so indignant about how, why are you pulling my kid over? And they're arguing with the police. As a black parent, we would never be able to do that and feel comfortable. And so just that disparity of not even being able to raise our voice to protect our child because of fear and being able to watch other women be able to do that is something that we live with. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think, too, we've got sexism to all women, but you are women of color, mm -hmm. so you've got to deal with race and sex mm -hmm. and the isms with both of them. And that intersectionality, um, looking at discrimination and harassment with both your, your sex mm -hmm. and your race mm -hmm. and how those two intersect mm -hmm. to increase the likelihood of you being discriminated against in society in general and the workplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I want to yeah. commend, you know, you, Susan, and, you know, you, you too, Nadia, because a lot of this conversation was born out of questions that have come mm -hmm. up after our other shows. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of courage mm -hmm. and a lot of trust to be able to ask those questions. And I really want to encourage more women of whatever color to ask questions and create safe spaces to have these kind of dialogues because before we can solve any of the big political things that are in our world, we have to solve that human connection first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think these conversations are, are like that. So my question for you, for the two of you is, what can women of color do to help increase your awareness in a way that doesn't make you feel judged? Mm. I always mm. felt like it, the onus of the responsibility would be on us. Mm. So it never occurred to me before you said that, what can a woman of color do or a black woman do? Uh, hmm, that's very interesting. Mm. You know, the one of the yeah. best friends that I had in my course of my work course was a, a black woman. And w that friendship evolved out of just friendly, comfortable conversation walking by each other's desks. Mm -hmm. And it, it built up over time. So that trust came, and, and that would be true of, I think, of in any friendship. I don't mm -hmm. see any difference with the way that friendship evolved than uh, it would be with me and, and any of the white women that were within that company. So I guess it's the friendly conversation mm -hmm. and allowing time to take its course for the, the deeper friendships to develop. Mm. I think what I would like, and I think this might be selfish, is to have, because I haven't done it and I've thought of it, is to have you all reach out and say, hey, do you want to meet for lunch? Do you want to go to a movie or something? And I haven't done it either. But yeah, I, I guess, I would like that, yeah. and and I guess I'm, in a way it's like you said, it's my. You're an extrovert, I'm, and I'm an introvert, and, yeah, and I'm so I choose a different path. White has the power, if you will. So maybe it should be more my responsibility to do that mm -hmm. than yours. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. What do you think? Mm -hmm. well, well, I agree that the onus should be on you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, however, as a white woman, you mean? Well, uh, yeah. As, absolutely. Yes. How, however, I do think there's that place where it crosses a line and people start to feel judged if you bring up the topic. And so, even with the friendship that you talked about, mm -hmm. I want to. Um, I want to prod a little bit with that. And so it may have been a cordial friendship, but was it really a deep friendship where you had those deep conversations about these kind of issues that we're talking about? In here? this case, it was Good. because it mm -hmm. went on for over 10 years uh -huh. and it continued after we both left the company. Yeah. And we would meet for the one thing that I, I judge mainly my friends by. We would meet for coffee uh -huh. and just talk. And we yeah. actually did talk about these kinds of issues yeah. without feeling judged back and forth. We could actually share back and forth. Yeah. That friendship has faded 
but only in a normal way that does with all friendships and yeah. stuff. And uh, and uh, it's it's not gone. We'll probably kick it back up again, uh -huh. just like the normal course. But yeah, yeah. it did get there, and That's and I awesome. feel value from that. Mm -hmm. I feel disappointed that it has faded at this particular point in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that's the key, you know, is to really be willing to have relationships outside of your circle mm -hmm. of familiarity, mm -hmm. outside of your comfort level. You know, some of the best conversations I've had about hair have been with my white girlfriend who was asking about, so what's the deal with washing black hair? You know, and we, we had that kind of connection, that conversation, and it, but it wasn't like, you have to educate me on it. It was just like, I'm just curious, I don't know. And I always appreciate that genuine curiosity that doesn't come from a place of judgment or come from a place of ignorance, but comes from a place of, you're my friend and I wanna understand who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think with us deciding to do this show, mm -hmm. one of the reasons that we wanted to do it is it is safe for us mm -hmm. to be open and who we are with each other and to learn and I, I wish that our other person was here that was going to be here because I remember she and I were talking about African American women's rear ends. <laughs> <laughs> and she was saying, we like our rear ends. We want them to be like that. And she said, and you white women, you got these darn flat ones. And, <laughs> and you know, we were having fun talking yeah. about it. Yeah. And um, yeah. there was no judgment. It, right. We were able to add some humor to a reality um, and men like our butts that are bigger or something and I mean it was it was a wonderful discussion that went on not just about butts but went on about a number of things for about a half an hour after the show and uh, saying we you, and she was saying you don't know how Oh, she said the the unconscious bias stuff of even walking past somebody in a grocery store or something and you see that woman pull her purse tighter to her. Oh yeah. Mm. Which I don't even think of as a white woman. Uh -huh. mm. Having to, I'm not surprised. Though. No, I, yeah. I, I know people who would be like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like she said, it's daily. It's every your everyday experience right. yeah. is dealing with the racism. Yeah, yeah. Ha, as subtle and nuanced as some of it might be, yeah. it's always there. Yeah. We can't even yeah. begin. I mm. think that's going to be our topic for our next show, which I think we should continue this conversation. And so as we are wrapping up this one, mm. which I'm sorry to say has oh, been yeah. great, um, but I, I really do. I really think that exploring more of that, um, mm -hmm. of, of how that is experienced every day for some people and not for some people mm -hmm. and going deeper. But uh, this has been great. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank for you. Going there. Thank you, and both of you and yeah. Nadia. Yeah, it's been good. I'd, li I'd like to do more. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you for joining us today. We hope today's show gave you some perspective on this very important topic of race. And uh, we hope to see you next time. <laughs>